So in this lesson, we're going to look at logic and truth tables. And basically, it's how computers think. And some of you might think, why do I really care how a computer thinks? However, there's something that we do on a regular basis today that is keyed directly to this. When we go to the internet and do a search, Google or Facebook or Bing or whatever engine you use, uses truth tables and logic to actually figure out what you mean by your statement there. So if you want to search for red butterflies, you type in red butterflies. However, what Google and them look at is each of those words and how you put them together determines the results that are going to come up. So logic and truth tables are actually very important for those type of concepts. So what we're going to look at is some of the operations and things that work with that, like such as negations or conjunctions or anything else in that matter as well and see how they work and see how the actual truth tables end up getting created and used. So for the first one we're going to look at is called negation. And this is when you say you don't want something. So a negation of a statement is the assertion that means the opposite of the original statement. So for in this example right here, we're going to assume that he likes dogs. So the opposite of that or the negation of that would be he does not like dogs. By the definition, the negation of a true statement is false. So therefore, he can't like dogs and not like dogs at the exact same time. So if it's not it, it means it's false at that point. So as we see in the truth table down the bottom, when P is true, not P is obviously false. However, the opposite is also true. When P is false, that means not P obviously has to be true. A conjunction is when we take two statements together. So, for example, that case that we gave you at the beginning when I said red butterflies and we were doing that search, that was really a conjunction. We're looking at both those things. When I do a search for red butterflies, I want just red butterflies. I really don't care about butterflies. I really don't care about the colored red. I want them both together at the same time. So, this is a conjunction. Their example, they're talking about baseball. It's baseball is 90% mental. And it says the other half of baseball is physical. Now, if you think about that mathematically and logically, can't make sense, right? You can't have 90% of baseball being mental and 50% being physical. Wouldn't work out. However, it is a good example of things that people do say and think about all the time and talk about. So the conjunction in this case is baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. Truth table for conjunction is a little strange because we have to look at both pieces individually and they both have to be true for your final statement to be true. So in the first case you have, if they're both true, P and Q are obviously true. However, in every other situation, if one of them is false, the whole final statement at the end is false. And that's where I was talking about that red butterfly. So in the only case that it would actually give you things you want is that first case where they're both red and a butterfly. However, if it was red but not a butterfly, I don't want it. If it was not red but a butterfly, again, I don't want it. If it was neither of those, I obviously really don't want it. So there's four different cases in the conjunction table, and this is another example of that. So here's a true conjunction. It says a fever may accompany a cold and a headache may accompany a cold. Here's one that would be false. You're required to pay income tax and pigs often fly. Obviously that's not true, except in that Geico commercial where the pig is flying. Here's another one that's false. Aspirin cures cancer and water is wet. Now if you think about that, water is wet, so that one is true, but aspirin doesn't cure cancer. President policies are always best for America, and Congress never passes an unwise bill. Those are situations that some people might think are true, but in reality, neither of those are true all the time. In the past, many health ex insurance ex policies did not cover pre-existing conditions. They did not cover an illness that existed prior to the purchase of this policy. A salesman's policy is stated as such. If you buy this policy, it will cover cases of the flu in your family next winter, and it will cover treatment for your wife's chronic arthritis. Now, the question is, was he telling the truth? The policy did not cover the pre-existing arthritic condition, so that part of the conjuncture was not true. Therefore, since it's a conjunction, both parts have to be true. For the final statement to be true, the salesman did tell a lie. A 
a disjunction is when either one of the statements could possibly be true, and that would give you what you want. So typically we use the symbol or in this case. So the, the red butterfly wouldn't be a good example because I didn't really want red and I didn't really want butterflies. However, other examples possibly could be. So in this example down here, it says the medication may cause dizziness or fatigue. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to cause both of them. It could cause one or the other. Or it could cause both. So the two statements are the medication may cause dizziness and the medication may cause fatigue. If you look at this truth table based on the one that we looked at before, you notice a distinct difference. The first line is true again because they're both true. However, in the next two cases when one of them is false, the final statement is also true still because either one would possibly work. The only time that it wouldn't work is when they're both false to begin with. And that means obviously everything is wrong and that's not something I really want. So let's look at a couple different cases here. Here's a true statement. A fever may accompany a cold or a headache may accompany a cold. You are required to pay income tax or pigs often fly. So see how this has changed from the one that we looked at before. This is now true because you are required to pay income tax. Even though pigs don't fly, that doesn't mean the whole statement isn't true. Aspen cures cancer or water is wet. Again, this one, the water is wet is true. So that for it means the final thing that it is a true disjunction. False. In this case, both those were false. So just as in the previous time when we looked at this for a conjunction, this is still false in the disjunction. Here's a, an example that we're going to look at for a disjunction. In my favorite restaurant, the waiter asked if I want butter or sour cream on my baked potato. Is this inclusive or exclusive? The difference between the two is inclusive means that I could have one or the other, or I could have both. Exclusive means I can only have one or the other, both wouldn't make sense. So in this case, if the waiter asked if I can have butter or sour cream on potato, that would be inclusive because I could have butter and sour cream on potato or one or the other. A good example of exclusive would be if your meal comes with fries or a baked potato. Now that one would be exclusive because I couldn't get both fries and a baked potato. I could only get one of those two pieces. An implication is a statement in the form of if, of P, if P, then Q. So we talk about this a lot. It's like if it's this, then it's this. The if then statement. In computers, that's a big deal when we're talking about programming and things like that. Remember, we use it a lot in everyday life as well. So here's a good example. It says your average is a 90 or more, you get an A for the course. So this conditional statement would be if your average is a 90 or above, then you get an A for the course. So we have a premise and a conclusion in this statement. So that's kind of what we talked about before when we were in looking at section 1-2. So the premise is your average is above 90 or above. The conclusion is you get an A for the course. So let's look at what the truth table looks like for this one. This one looks a little bit different than the other ones. It says, P, if P is true, then Q is true. And Q is true, then the, obviously the whole statement is true. However, if P is true and Q is false, then the statement is false because it's if this, then that, that can't be false. This is where it gets a little tricky though, because if the premise is false, it actually doesn't matter what the conclusion or the statement was at the end. So once the premise is false, the other piece doesn't really matter. They're always going to be true at the end. All right, let's look at four different cases of the conditional truth tables. This first one is true. It says if the earth is spherical, which it's true, then you can go from Spain to Japan by traveling west. So first statement's true, the premise, therefore the conclusion is also true. Let's look at the next one. This one's false. If the moon orbits the earth, which is true, the moon does orbit the earth, then the moon is a planet, which is not true. Since it, it would make sense if the earth was the center of the universe, like we used to think, but today the sun is, we orbit the sun, therefore it makes us planets. And the moon, since it orbits us, is not a planet, it's a moon. 
If the Earth is the planet nearest to the Sun, then the Earth orbits the Sun once each year. Now in this case, the conditional is true, even though the premise is false. The conclusion is true, the Earth does orbit the Sun once each year, but the Earth is not the planet nearest to the Sun. Now this one is a little interesting. It says, if the Earth is the planet farthest from the Sun, then the Moon is made of green cheese. And I think that this is totally false, because everything is false about it. But because of that, it actually is true. It says, the Earth isn't the planet farthest from the Sun, so that is false. Therefore, it doesn't matter what else I say, the statement's going to be true, because if the original piece is false, therefore, anything after it doesn't really matter. So, the actual, this conditional, is actually true. All right. It says, the new premise is pro President promises. If Congress passes my economic package, then the recession will end in two years. Under which of the following scenarios would we think the president kept his promise? Scenario one says Congress passes the economic passage, but two years later in the recession persists. Second one is Congress does not pass the economic package, but two years later the recession persists. So the question is, is which one of those did he actually keep his promise? See, if we look at scenario one, the premise is true. Congress passed the economic package. However, the conclusion is not true. It says the recession will end in two years. In this case, the recession persists. So therefore, that was false. So since it's a conditional, if the premise is true, the only way for the conditional to be true is if the conclusion was also true. In this case, it wasn't. So the promise was not kept. Let's look at scenario two. It says Congress does not pass the economic package, therefore my premise is false. Two years later, the session persists. That means my conclusion was also false. Since they're both false under a conditional, that promise could be considered to be kept. Next one states, let's make Bill a math major. And Bill is a chemistry major. Let's look at how we can put these two together. So, the first one, Bill is a math major or a chemistry major. It says M or C. This disjunction is true because he can't be both, but he can be a math major or a chemistry major. Bill is not a math major and is a chemistry major. So, he's not a math major and a chemistry major. So my initial statement says that they're both true. So in this case, this would be false because the conjunction doesn't make sense. He can't be both false and true. Bill is not a math major, then he is a chemistry major. This is going to be true because he's not a math major, that's false. Since the premise is false, the conclusion doesn't matter, so therefore the conditional is true. Just as with everything, things can get more complex, and truth tables can as well. So let's look at this example. It says, if you do not remember the past, then you are condemned to repeat it. So P is, you remember the past. Q is, you're condemned to repeat it. Now, the original statement says, if you do not remember the past. So the, the beginning piece will be not P, because I'm going to state P is, I remember the past. It's really hard to do not double negatives and things like that. So always try to make your P's and Q's positive versions of them. So let's look at this. If P is true, Q is true, we have the three statements. So not P would be switching the P's. So if P is true, then not P would be false. If T is P is true, not P would be false. If P is false, not P would be true. Now, when we look at not P to Q, we're looking at the second and the third column. We're looking at the not P first, and then the Q. So remember a conditional, if the premise is false, it doesn't matter what the conclusion is. So that means these first two, since not P is false, automatically make my conditional true. When my premise is true in the last line, yet my conclusion is false, that's the only case where it'll end up being false. So this fact is relevant to those people who remember the past and are condemned to repeat it. 
1994, California voters approved Proposition 187, which states, A person shall not receive any public social services until he or she has been verified as a United States citizen or as a lawful or admitted alien. So the law was later judged unconstitutional. However, let's look at a truth table for this statement. So citizenship has been verified and the law admitted, lawfully admitted alien status has been verified. Those are the two pieces that we're going to look at. So under Proposition 187, the condition that would deny services is not C or A. So the only time that they would not be able to get social services is if they were not a citizen or not a lawful alien citizen. It's got to be both of those. So we take them, we put them together. So that's true, 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 C or A. Now, not CRA would have those be false. So it's not the opposite of that. So the only case would be true is when the original two statements are both false. Conditional statements are the ones that are most cause the problems. And there's also actually a few different other versions of conditional statements. We have converse statements, we have inverse, and we have contrapositives. So let's look at each of those and see what they actually mean. So we're going to take this example. It says, you support my bill. That's our premise. And our conclusion would be, you are, pa you are a patriotic American. So the condition would be, if you support my bill, then you're a patriotic American. So, so here we have an example of the three different types of conditional statements that you can see. The original conditional is obviously, if you support my bill, then you're a patriotic American. The converse is when we switch the conclusion of the premise. So if you're a patriotic American, then you support my bill would be the converse of that case. That's Q is if Q then P. The inverse is when we take the conditional statement and we basically take the negative of each of those pieces. So it's the not premise and the not conclusion. So if you do not support my bill, then you are not a patriotic American. The contrapositive puts the converse and the inter inverse together. It takes the not versions of each of those and also switches the premise and the conclusion. So if you are not a patriotic American, then you do not support my bill. So as you can see, we actually talk a lot like this as well. It's like when we want to say certain things, we switch things around, we add knots and things like that in there. Sometimes it's used to confuse people. Sometimes it's used to cloud the truth, for instance. So if we look at this logic table, which quite, is quite large and has a whole bunch of different things in there, but I want you to focus in on the red pieces and the bold lines. What do you notice about those two things? If you look at the two red ones, the converse and the inverse, they're exactly the same. It means they're logically equivalent. It means the converse and the inverse are basically the exact same thing. Switch them around or do the knots of each case. You're going to get the exact same truth table at the end. Therefore, they end up being the same in the end. Also, if you look at the bold ones, the conditional and the contrapositive, they are also both the same. So again, if we switch the two pieces around and do the knots, we're going to end up basically becoming the same. It's kind of that whole double negative thing. If you take the double negative, you end up getting the exact same thing in the beginning. It's kind of like that state. So you just see a summary of the conditional statements and the contrapositives, the converse, and the inverse statements, and see how they actually work together. All right, let's look at a few of these and actually put them all together and see if we can come up with them. So if you vote for me, your taxes will be cut. All Democrats are liberals. So let's look at the first one. The converse, if your taxes are cut, you voted for me. So it's basically taking the two, the premise and the conclusion. So if you vote for me was, or you vote for me was the premise, your taxes will be cut is the conclusion. We reverse those, it's the converse. If your taxes are cut, then you voted for me. The inverse is the not of each one. If you did not vote for me, your taxes will not be cut. Contrapositive, 
is if your taxes are cut, not cut, you did not vote for me. So if you look at it, the remember, the converse and the inverse are basically the exact same thing, logically. However, if you say both those things, they mean, and, and people actually will think about them two different ways. Same thing with the contrapositive and the original conditional. They both mean the same thing. However, they have different, people think about them differently. All right, let's look at all Democrats are liberals. If you are liberal, then you're a Democrat. That would be the converse of that. So this is switching those two things. If you're not a Democrat, then you're not a liberal. If you're not a liberal, then you're not a Democrat. Now, these examples are taking that the original conditional statement was accepted. And with everything in um, terminology, there are little things. But if we just look at it mathematically and with the truth tables, those converse, inverse, and contrapositives make sense originally with the, the conditional. So, inclusions, we're looking at the logic tables. We talked about the truth table. And we looked at some of the different operations in state, like negation, conjunction, disjunction, conditionals, and implications. So, that is formal logic and truth tables.